A reusable launch system is a space launch system that includes the recovery of some or all of the component stages. To date, several fully reusable sub-orbital systems and partially reusable orbital systems have been flown. No fully reusable orbital launch system has yet been demonstrated. The first reusable launch vehicle to reach orbit was the Space Shuttle, which was not able to accomplish the intended goal of reducing launch costs to below those of expendable launch systems. During the 21st century, commercial interest in reusable launch systems has grown, with several active launchers. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket has a reusable first stage and capsule for Dragon flights and expendable second stage, the spaceship company has flown reusable suborbital spaceplanes, and the suborbital Blue Origin New Shepard rocket has recoverable first stages and crew capsules. Topic. Vehicle configurations The single stage to orbit SSTO approach has yet to be proven viable, while several partially reusable two stage to orbit vehicles are active or in an advanced stage of development. Expendable rockets air launched from aircraft can be considered partially reusable if the aircraft is thought of as the first stage of the launch vehicle. An example of this configuration is the Orbital Sciences Pegasus. The spaceship company combination of Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2 is a fully reusable suborbital vehicle with wings on both the launch aircraft and the rocket-propelled second stage. Non-rocket space launch systems provide a theoretical increase in efficiency. Topic. Landing. Vehicles that land horizontally on a runway require wings and undercarriage. These typically consume about 9-12% of the landing vehicle mass, which either reduces the payload or increases the size of the vehicle. Concepts such as lifting bodies offer some reduction in wing mass, as does the delta wing shape of the space shuttle. Vertical landings can be accomplished either with parachutes as with Soyuz, or propulsively. The DCX is an example of a propulsive lander, and the Falcon 9 rocket is the first orbital rocket to vertically land its first stage on the ground. This typically requires about 10% of the total first stage propellant, reducing the payload that can be carried due to the rocket equation. Topic: Reuse hardware landing propellant. Reusable stages mass more than equivalent expendable stages. This is unavoidable due to the supplementary systems and or surplus propellant needed to land a stage. The actual mass penalty depends on the vehicle and the return mode chosen. Re-entry heat shielding As a rough rule of thumb, 15% of the landed weight of an atmospheric re-entry vehicle needs to be heat shielding. Thermal protection systems TPS, can be made of a variety of materials, including reinforced carbon-carbon and ablative materials. Historically these materials were first developed on ICBM MIRVs. However, the requirements of reusable space systems differ from those of single-use re-entry vehicles, especially with regards to heat shield requirements. In particular the need for durable high emissivity coatings that can withstand multiple thermal cycles constitutes a key requirement in the development of new reusable spacecraft. Current materials for such high emissivity coatings include transition metal desilicides. Topic. History With the invention of rocket propulsion in the first half of the 20th century, space travel became a technical possibility. 
early ideas of a single-stage reusable spaceplane proved unrealistic and although even the first practical rocket vehicles V2 could reach the fringes of space, reusable technology was too heavy. In addition many early rockets were developed to deliver weapons, making reuse impossibly by design. The problem of mass efficiency was overcome by using multiple expendable stages in a vertical launch multi-stage rocket. The first reusable stages did not appear until the advent of the U.S. Space Shuttle in 1981. Modern reusable orbital vehicles include the X-37 and the Dream Chaser. Topic. 20th century. NASA started the Space Shuttle design process in the late 1960s, with the vision of creating a fully reusable spaceplane using a crewed fly-back booster for the 1970s. This design proved too expensive and complex to develop in time, therefore the design was scaled back to use reusable solid rocket boosters and an expendable external tank. The shuttle proved much more expensive to operate over its lifetime 1981 to 2011 than an expendable launch system would have been. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan called for an air-breathing scramjet National Aerospace Plane NASP, X-30. The project failed due to severe technical issues and was cancelled in 1993. In the 1990s, the McDonnell Douglas Delta Clipper VTOL SSTO proposal progressed to the testing phase. The DCX prototype demonstrated rapid turnaround time and automatic computer control. In mid-1990, British research evolved an earlier HOTOL design into the far more promising Skylon design, which remains in development. From the commercial side, rocket plane Kistler and Rotary Rocket attempted to build reusable privately developed rockets before going bankrupt. NASA proposed risky reusable concepts to replace the shuttle technology, to be demonstrated under the X-33 and X-34 programs, which were both cancelled in the early 2000s due to rising costs and technical issues. Topic. 21st century The Ansari X Prize contest was intended to develop private suborbital reusable vehicles. Many private companies competed, with the winner, Scaled Composites, reaching the Kármán line twice in a two-week period with their reusable spaceship own. In 2012, SpaceX started a flight test program with experimental vehicles. These subsequently led to the development of the Falcon 9 reusable rocket launcher. On the 23rd of November 2015, the Blue Origin New Shepard rocket became the first vertical takeoff landing (VTOL) rocket to reach space by passing the Kármán line, 100 kilometers, reaching 329,839 feet (100.5 kilometers) before returning to a parachute landing. SpaceX achieved the first vertical soft landing of a reusable orbital rocket stage on December 21, 2015, after helping send 11 Orbcom OG-2 commercial satellites into low Earth orbit. The first Falcon 9 second flight occurred on 30 March 2017. SpaceX now routinely recovers and reuses their first stages, with the intent of reusing fairings as well. As of August 2019, the only reusable operational orbital boosters are Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. SpaceX is also developing the fully reusable BFR launch system. Topic: List of active reusable launch systems. Topic. See also Spaceplane List of private spaceflight companies